Good morning. Hopefully today we've got some audio to start this. <laughs> Good morning. A very warm welcome to you and welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Oh, a nice fresh one. Right, let me see if the chat's working. Yay, chat's working. In fact, I've really enjoyed the chat here this morning. Uh, those of you which do join in with the sessions live, we typically, well, I start normally the night before, and we normally have a little chit chat, which you can see going above my head uh, beforehand, and I've been up since, ooh, two o'clock this morning. Uh, so, looks like we have sound good. Brilliant, everybody who's just mentioned that, and again, you can see the live chat above my head. With that said, what have we got on the topics list for you this morning? So in today's RC Coffee Chat, we need to get to the elephant in the room, which was the three duffers in a row. Quite frustrating, that will be topic number one this morning. Uh, topic number two is the series on iNav. Uh, topic number three, you are going to meet the KFU Extra FL. Uh, topic number four is Hobby King Screw Up. We'll be looking at that because, by the way, I just checked on Hobby King Screw Up and it's still showing his 77 pence. <laughs> Not good. Oh, you couldn't see that, but it's, it's showing his 77 pence on my screen. Uh, topic number five is Flawless. You'll find out what that is in a few moments' time. Topic number six is the Mini Talent is back on sale and available in the EU warehouse uh, for a stunning 36 quid. Absolute bargain. Topic number seven is uh, lost model alarms. Something which I need to separate out into a dedicated episode because I do feel that they're worthy of them. I've got a whole little raft of them right here. And we'll find out how something which costs a few cents uh, can save you a model. We'll get to that later on. Uh, as normal, we've got the shopping bender. There's only one thing of, of special note uh, in this week. Uh, and... The last thing which we'll do in today's off week, uh, RC coffee, sh coffee Chat is going to see if the Hobby King website is still broken or not. So with that said, let's get into topic number one, which was three duffers in a row. And apologies, I'm not really keeping an eye on the chat at the moment. Uh, I will do a get to shout out corner in a moment. So three duffers in a row, literally three models in a week from Banggood. All with issues so what do we have i need to check my notes on here so i had a crushed rare bear literally crushed it been had some form of impact uh in on the top of it not a pretty sight especially considering that was supposed to be my spare one as uh, so i wasn't that particularly uh, impressed the fock wolf little 643 millimeter uh, model also turned up stunning looking little model uh, didn't fly very well because someone obviously had the cg wrong on it uh, so uh, I have done the maiden on that one and I can tell you it didn't go very well and Matt now needs a new motor mate for it. Uh, and the P47 Thunderbolt also turned up uh, within the past week and that one was also severely damaged because the wing was cracked and the nose was hanging off it. Now this does seem, so in, on, on one hand is that I'm really pissed off about this because that was three models in a row which have all had packaging issues. Now, the common thing amongst these three models is that they all went through EMS, which turns out to be Parser Force here in the United Kingdom, and normally Parser Force are pretty damn good. The other common thing amongst these three different models is that they are all the Fun Fighter series by the looks of it. So those Fun Fighter models, they are absolutely fantastic, but maybe not the best idea to buy from Banggood because they're not packaged for the journey. Now, in the background, uh, I've been in contact with Banggood support, as you can imagine. I'm not that impressed by the response because they offered me 50% off the rare bear and as I made a point, 70% of the foam in the, in the kit is actually broken and I can't actually fly the model because that model does 100 miles an hour and there's no way in which I'm flying that rare bear at full knacker above my head in that state. So for all intents and purposes, it's knackered. So we've now progressed to a PayPal dispute, which is up yours uh, in short. Uh, but on a very constructive note, uh, I've been in, with, in contact with my contact over at Banggood uh, and they're going back and passing on the information to the dispatch team about those products in that range. So hopefully this gets fixed for you in the future. So 
I've had my three duffers in a row, very, very frustrating. Um, but don't let that detract from the actual models themselves. If you can get hold of those models from somewhere else, they are absolutely ballistic. I absolutely adore my rare bear. It's mental. I reckon that everybody should own one and I wish it was cheaper so I could stick it in the models for 50, 50 quid or less because it is absolutely bonkers. A little model which will do literally a ton out of the box. Absolutely bonkers. We clocked it at 80 miles an hour on 3S and we also clocked it at 102 miles an hour uh, on Forest. Absolutely bonkers models. Just frustrating, and I think hopefully that's my free duffers out of the way now, because they say bad luck happens in freeze. So there's my free over and done with. So yeah, a little bit frustrating to say the least, but the bigger models, which we know, like the Skywalker Cirrus or the Mini Talon, which we'll get to in a moment, at least we know that they're boxed adequately, you know, and they can actually stand the journey. So, yeah, mildly frustrating. Uh, let's have a quick look at the chat. Um, uh, Matt, how is the bigger rare bear? So, sorry, as you can see the chat above my head. Uh, I haven't flown it since we've been out and flown it. The reason why I've not been and flown it lately is because I'm going to need a 6S battery. And I was supposed to be going flying on Sunday. But I ended up having a family day instead and had to do a load of gardening and stuff here. So I didn't get actually get around to flying it on 6S yet. So uh, it's been out. It's already been flown. I don't think I've posted the... Ah, I need to dig the video out on that one because the maiden didn't go particularly well. <laughs> don't worry, I got it on video. So Lauren, fantastic question. Uh, the bigger uh, Rare Bear Elite uh, is absolutely bonkers but it would be far better on 6S rather than 4S, put it that way. Oh, and I also managed the Nakara graphene battery pack in that model too. Got a complete dead cell in it, which is very frustrating. Anyway, uh, moving on, the iNav series. Now, the playlist to this series is in the video description for you, and I'm sure many of you have already been and seen uh, at least the part one of the series on iNav. And I'm so happy to be able to say to you and come back to this uh, six months on and go, this is actually pretty damn cool. It works really, really well. Now, those of you which want to skip ahead a couple of episodes, because right now we only have three episodes being published on YouTube, uh, is that there is a link to the Facebook group in the video description underneath this episode for you. Uh, and I have posted a couple of additional parts uh, and there will be another part coming out later today. Uh, and I've also got some other parts which need to be recorded as I do with, or as I always do with all the episodes which I publish, is that they always go first in the Facebook group. Uh, just a little perk of joining in with the almost, uh, well, I'll tell you right now, as of right now, 957 cool pilots like me and you. Uh, so, yeah, always post them in the Facebook group first. There are a collection of episodes coming out. Give you, give you a heads up on what's uh, coming on there. Uh, the next part is going to be a closer look at the board itself. So that's going to be the V1 board uh, and, and a wiring diagram so you know how to hook things up. So when it comes around to jabbing the stuff on the right pins, you kind of know which pins to put it on. Uh, we've got a tip for soldering the pins onto the flight controller board. Uh, I already have done the episode on soldering up the GPS unit. Uh, that's an episode which has already been recorded. It's available in the Facebook group right now. We also have an introduction to the iNav configurator. That episode has also been recorded uh, and should be in the Facebook group for you too. That will come out in a couple of days time. Uh, uh, next uh, part in the series, we've got flashing iNav onto the board, uh, setting up iNav with the basic settings, uh, connecting up the GPS module, uh, what are flight modes, uh, then we've got pre-flight checks, uh, and also, yeah, there's a comment in there actually uh, about the current calibration, but the actual episodes, there's going to be about a dozen episodes in the series because... I've worked out there's about 12 and I'll probably chuck in a few extra little ad hoc ones as well uh, to cover a couple of topics specifically. Now there was a note which came up in the Facebook group about the Ominous F4 Pro board and the current calibration. Now that is actually really straightforward but it is a little bit dangerous so you do need someone to give you a hand. Uh, apologies, I can't remember who asked that one. Uh, basically you need to attach a current meter 
to your um, model and then spin the model up like I said it's not ideal you need to spin the model up and then try and um, look at the current actually being used and compare that to the current being shown in iNav uh, where, uh, sorry, you probably need a little pair of goggles on the desk. This is why I'm saying you'll need someone to help you to do this. Uh, and then you most likely need to increase the value uh, for the current sensor. Now, a value for me and my version two, uh, so my version two F4 board was 740 for the value which you enter in the iNav configurator. That pretty much it got it spot on. So the current actually being used to the current being shown in on the on-screen display uh, was pretty was nigh on as accurate as I could make it. So uh, it did take a little bit of trial and error and you will need someone there with you because spinning up the motor with a prop on needs someone to hold the model down uh, while you check on the different bits. And again, you don't have to give it full knacker. You just need to spin the motor up to a, to a moderate speed to, to get an accurate, well, get a decent amount of current going through. Try it and then once you think you've got it right, try it at a couple of different throttle levels and off you go. Okay, so th that was a question which came in from the Facebook uh, group earlier when I mentioned the RC Coffee Chat earlier this morning. So iNav, genuinely impressed with this. Come on, it's like $45 or less. I haven't got the boards here with me, but I can tell you I've got three more of the V2 boards uh, have been arrived here and I've got a collection of GPS modules. And that's of course on top of the other kit which I've already had arrived here as well. Super, super cheap dead straightforward to set up and this series is going to be a longer than what we may be used to for example say from painless 360 series the reason being is because i cannot assume that you've had any prior knowledge of any of this before so we take things nice and slow and we cover quite a bit of the background uh, as well so i hope that you're enjoying the series if you want to overdose on some additional episodes which haven't been published yet they are already in the Facebook group and as I add more they will go in the Facebook group first and then a couple of days later they will then turn up uh, on public uh, YouTube videos. Uh, so let's have a quick look. Um, Bobby uh, has asked, hey Matt have you ever thought about reviewing some of the flight test planes? Uh, no, uh, in short, uh, no I think they're rather expensive uh, for the kits and cutting out from plans is an absolute pain in the ass. and again I'm just giving you all my honest feedback here I've tried making those models in the past really I, I just find it really frustrating so I'd rather go off on my own route maybe uh, once it, one instead of going like the flight test route I would probably prefer to go the experimental airlines route so in fact I'll go quickly get this up on the screen for you give me a moment experimental uh, airlines YouTube again I'm just going to experiment airline you I'll put this in the chat for you and I'll put it up my screen as well uh, there we go uh, look up Ed on YouTube so it's experimental airlines uh, really really nice guy uh, it's got some fantastic models keeps things really really straightforward uh, using a common set of components um, that's more likely the route which I'll go with maybe the baby APD and things like that um, I'll have a look at those in the future again because they're really really straightforward and they're all pretty much based upon the arm and wing which is very very simple to create uh, and requires no special folding uh, and not many burnt fingers, which I actually have at the moment, uh, with hot glue. Uh, so I'll probably follow the experimental airlines route. Uh, and of course, Andrew, Sir Andrew Newton, has done his own thread uh, on those with a collection of uh, models which he's been in made and adapted as well. Something like a Spectre, for example, uh, that would be of interest to me. So yeah, won't be doing flight test, probably be doing a different range of models instead. I've got a box full of uh, Depron here. I've got plenty of time to muck around. Uh, sorry, I've got plenty of foam to muck around. Time is always a challenge for me. That's again, let me just stress, I've bought some Depron because I wanted to muck around with a couple of different experiments, which you'll see one of those experiments in a few moments time. Uh, but building from plans and stuff really doesn't do it for me. Uh, so I, I like the looseness or the interpretation part uh, to get it roughly right and not having to do like a billion little annoying folds. I'd rather keep things 
much, much more straightforward. And that's why I'm suggesting Air Experimental Airlines and Ed might be an idea for you to, to go and take a look at. Some of those models fly absolutely fantastic and the build process is a damn sight easier than anything which flight tests uh, cover. Um, flight tests do uh, have a fantastic range of models. They have some very complex designs, but they're not for me. I'd like a simpler approach. I'm I'm not rich on time, if that makes sense. So what time I do have, I need to spend on either, I, I need results more quickly. This is why out of the box models have always been a, fav a favorite for me because you can get them built really, really quickly and you can get to the flight line really, really quickly. There are obviously exceptions. One of them is sat right next to me right now, you know? So I hope that helps. I hope that answers the question. So with that said, let's move across to Shout Out Corner. So this is where I get to say good morning to you, good afternoon or good evening, as the case may be. Now, obviously, if you're watching the recorded version, you can say howdy in the comments section underneath. I'm fat. I'm going to take my pause just to have a quick sip myself. So it's been very busy here this morning in the chat. So I'll, I'll try and get everybody uh, in here this morning. So good morning, Brad and Andy and one old goat. Uh, good morning, Lauren, as well. Scrolling down. Uh, good morning, Ruds. Good morning, Tom. Uh, scrolling down. Good morning, Lee, as well. Uh, good morning, Elijah. And good morning, Wolfgang. Good morning, Shane. Not really me. Good morning, Andy Morgan. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Aaron. Uh, good morning as well. Austin, good morning. You're up early, fella. Uh, Wolfgang, uh, Tim, Neil, uh, 7 damage 7 which is Jeff. Good morning, sir. Dang this stupid password. Uh, good morning, Keith. Uh, Bobby, uh, Paul, good morning. Scrolling down. Again, I'm doing my best not to miss anybody. Richard, good morning. Hilbert, good morning. Scrolling down. Paul, good morning. Still going. Still going. Did I miss out, Brad? Brad, if I missed you out, I do apologise. Peter and Bobby, good morning as well. Van, good morning too. Uh, and Philip, good morning as well. Now, obviously, if I've... Oh, Dragon Rider FPV. Obviously, if I have been and missed your name, I do apologise. Like I said, it's been very busy there in the chat this morning. Uh, so, yeah, don't take it personally if I missed your name. Uh, it has been rather uh, busy there in the chat this morning. As you can see, going above my head. So, quickly recap. Three duffers in a row. Rather frustrating. Hopefully some good becomes of that. Uh, the iNav series is progressing. Now that brings us, and this scratch building uh, route does bring us on really, really nicely into the next topic, which is, as many of you, or hopefully you've been and seen, the Keifu. Now I've got the little Keifu down here because Dave made a Keisu and I really liked it. It flew absolutely really well. And this is my Keifu and it's mucking up the colour balance on here because it really is that bright. It is a luminous pink. There's no not finding this model, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, and again, it's the brightest colour, well, one of the brightest colours I had in the cans of spray paint. Uh, and it does fly fantastically well, although I just noticed I've got a bent prop on it. Um, yeah, it does fly fantastically well. But there were two issues which I have with this model. Uh, and they're very straightforward. So number one, because of the KF4, is it the KF2, KF4 wing when you've got the board on, board on the top and the bottom, uh, has absolutely no glide characteristics at all. Flies great, but absolutely no glide. Uh, and also, even with that size battery bay in there, I do feel somewhat limited uh, on battery life. And the amount, literally eight out of 10 flights I have to walk and go and get the model or find the model because I've flown it so much, it's been and fallen out of the sky with a dead lipo. <laughs> and I, I'm not kidding you, I've really enjoyed this model. Uh, it's really straightforward. This is kind of my build. Uh, there, there isn't any fancy folding in here. Uh, it's cut out a triangle, cut, uh, stick another triangle on the top and a triangle on the bottom uh, and then glue some booms on and make a thingy bit for the front and two motor mounts. That's my kind of scratch building. Nice and simple as the way it should be without any complex folding. Uh, there is absolutely no folds in this model at all. It's all straightforwards. 
cut and glue, which is right up my street. Now, talking about cutting and gluing, get to sit down. So that was the Keifu, absolute brilliant little model. I've put a link to that video in the video description for you. It flies fantastically well. To the point, I decided that I wanted a bigger version. So taking on Ed's Armin wing, I decided to up it a level, make a slightly bigger version. Now, when I say slightly bigger, it's actually twice the size. And I've got it here with me, and it is a bit on the large side. Um, uh, here she is. This is, and look at the bloody size. I don't even know how I'm going to get this on the screen, to be honest. Look at the size of that. This is the KFU XFL, because uh, it really is extra large. Um, it's absolutely bonkers. Now, this is a Armin style wing. Let me put that up on the camera so you can see I've bent, the, bent that over. There is a 10 mil by 10 mil uh, square carbon uh, rod uh, tube running across the middle. Uh, I've got a huge great big battery bay. Look at the size of that. I'll be able to get a massive great big 3S battery in the front. Now you may be wondering Matt why are you running 3S is because I had a 450 quadcopter uh, here a while ago, which I decided to expand to the parts. I've got some 980 kV motors on the front with some 10 by 5 slow fly props on there, some 20 amp ESC. So this isn't going to be a 4S one. Uh, this one is specifically designed for 3S. Obviously, I may change the motors and the ESCs later. Uh, and I've gone for a twin boom ATEL with a horizontal stabilizer in there. Now, the sharp ones amongst you may realize that Matt has got servos in two different places. And that's because someone put it on the wrong way around and then thought, screw it, I'm rolling with it. And that's what we've got. So this is the KFU XFL and it's absolutely massive. Uh, and that's really kind of up my street because it was really kind of simple to build, to be honest. The two wings were done in two different parts. The folding wasn't particularly complicated. The, the fuselage is just a box, you know, and the tail is some hot glue and some servos rammed in it. That's more kind of like my scratch build territory, keeping things simple. But because of we, because we've got the folded wing, we actually have a wing profile there, which should provide a little bit more efficiency in the sky compared to the Keifu. So, yeah, still needs a bit of work, a couple of control rods, a little bit of wiring, needs the receiver sticking in it. She's not that far away, she'll be ready for Friday in her maiden. I can't wait to be honest, I'm really looking forward to this one. Isn't going to be bonkers fast with that current setup, but it should be miles more efficient. And also because, again I didn't show you, uh, again apologies right now, I mean, there's a lot of wires in here. Uh, is that in this top section, if I can get in there, in there, we have a great big bay, which we can then go and get maybe a flight control board in there, uh, or at least a current sensor. <laughs> it's huge. Uh, and, or at least a current sensor, so uh, I don't end up uh, making it fall out the sky uh, because I've flattened the battery again. Famous last words, isn't it? So yeah, that's the key fruit. And we have, because it's a VTEL, we have some rudderage on it. So I might be able to bang it around some trees and go bang, bang, bang. Well, as many of you know, our flying sight door, those trees which you can see here in the background, uh, we do like to skirt in and around those. Hopefully I'll be able to chuck that thing around there as well. Uh, and because it cost a whole, ooh, probably about nine pounds worth of foam, if I stuff it in, I'm not going to cry, uh, in short. Well, I would be upset because I've spent quite a bit of time building that one, but for nine quid for the foam board, happy days. So that is the X. Uh, good morning, David, by the way. Uh, live maiden. <laughs> uh, Shane says, what's the build material? It's Deprom. It's some white foam board. Uh, bought it off uh, a German-based site. Well, somebody recommended it on one of the YouTube videos. Looked around for the pricing, it did seem pretty good value for money. Uh, so I bought 30 sheets of 6 mil and I bought 10 sheets of 3 mil as well. And I'm also mucking around some other models as well, uh, well some of the different designers as well. But 
it is what it is. I don't know where I'm going to end up with it. Just fancied doing a bit of scratch building for a change. And again, just because the cave food, because Dave's flew so fantastically well, uh, I just wanted to make a bigger version. In fact, I may even come back and make a revised version of this one, which actually has a folded arm and wing for it, but on this form factor. So I may do that at a later day. Um, and again, if I do that, I may just pillage the parts out of that one, you know, just rip the servos out, rip the booms out, and then go and make a new version. Yeah, happy days. Uh, good morning, Copter Deal as well. Um, happy days. Welcome aboard, sir, fella. I appreciate that. Right. So that's the Kifu XFL. Really looking forward to flying that one, to be brutally honest. Absolutely fantastic. Well, I'm quite impressed with myself so far and I've been even been using that brain gorilla glue which just oozes out everywhere very peculiar glue uh, next topic this morning is the hobby king up now I want to make a point you can just see it in behind the chat up on my screen let me just move hide the chat a second there you go 77 pence that's shown for uh, and those of you uh, which have spotted this in the Facebooks group probably went on and ordered a collection of them. To be honest, I've got enough motors, so I kind of skipped over that myself. But I know many of you uh, went on and ordered these from uh, Hobby King. Uh, and uh, they, I think they made a boo-boo on the pricing and have tried to backpedal them. Now, uh, in the chat, uh, which we've got here... Uh, it, again, there's been a, quite a bit of conversation on here. Number one, that Hobby King was selling the motors for 99 uh, cents, uh, but they seem to have made a mistake on their price and then trying to retract them. So we don't know if they're going to try and invoice you for the price difference. Uh, it's a bit of an awkward one on Hobby King's point of view uh, because that's the price which they advertise and that's the price which you bought at. Um, a bit of an awkward one, really, isn't it? To say this, but I just don't think that's really fair game. Uh, at all you put it on your website it is still on your website days later at again i'm not making, i'm going to refresh this page i've not hacked the page i've not changed the page at all i'm just hitting reload and it still says 77 pence or product works out to be 99 cents so it's still an issue on their site and they're trying to backpedal on the pricing that's not really paying fair really is it um, especially when days later your website is still showing 99 cents there's been a bit of fun and a bit of chatter about that in the uh, facebook group obviously you can let us know hey, there you go i've just looked at the chat <laughs> brad says i ordered nine of them <laughs> good lad uh, so if you have any thoughts and feelings uh, on that fiasco is probably the best word uh, let us know uh, you can do that right now in the live chat if you're on the live version or in the comment section uh, in the underneath this video uh, afterwards yeah and lee i totally agree with you uh joe says not legal in new zealand yet yeah, not legal here in the united kingdom either uh, and there's lee put out a uh, note put a note in there absolutely right uh, if it happened in a normal shop they would have to sell it at the mart price as well yeah very uh not good uh, to say the least so that was a little bit of fun this week uh, next topic is flawless. Now, I've actually got some video footage for you for this one. Uh, I haven't published it yet on uh, YouTube. And why I'm saying flawless, it was my Team Legit FG36. The Maiden was absolutely flawless. And it flew exactly how I expected it. I've had this model in my office for, I would probably say, five months Literally, that I, I just wanted that it was the, the model where, why I found uh, Team Legit originally, uh, and I've had it here for absolutely blooming ages, uh, and I've just never got around to building it. And the reason why I never got around to building it is because I always knew I needed to get quite a bit of weight up in the nose, and that's bucking around with the white balance. And then Shane posted this 3D printed, and again, that's mucking around with the white balance. Let me see if I can white it out. There you go. I don't know if that's coming out well, that's coming out. But there is a 3D printed uh, module on the front. Shane uh, McDowell posted that uh, in the Team Legit Facebook group, 
It was like, wow, that's fantastic. That's nudged me over the edge. I went on, I printed it. It took nine hours to print it. Uh, and to be honest, it was nine hours uh, w uh, worth w the wait. Uh, and it came out fantastically well. It got the CG right for me, especially with the run cam up on the nose. I didn't have to cut any foam out. It also meant that I, I always knew that I wanted that wing to be pure white or as white as I could make it. Uh, and it did fantastically well. So with that said, let's go and see the maiden. Now, uh, I am just gonna quickly turn off the chat. Uh, well, no, I tell you what, I'll just leave it running. So uh, I haven't published this yet because I haven't had time to go and edit it. So uh, this is literally the live maiden. That's me just speaking with Craig to uh, on the launch trip, which I don't know why, he, he always flies wings, doesn't he? So he kind of knows what he's doing. And uh, this is There you go. That was the maiden of the FG36. Now, obviously, I will go on and get an edited version of that up uh, and running uh, as soon as I can for you. But when I when I called it flawless, I mean it was flawless. It just went off. And even with the uh, crosswinds on that day as well, it was moving around because it was getting banged from side to side. Not much you can do with that about that, especially with the size of the fins on either side. And then when you gave it full knacker, it absolutely screamed its nuts off and went silly fast. Absolutely brilliant, straight out of my street. So, yeah, flawless FG36. Most, most impressed. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat as well. Um, As well. Sorry, apologies. I was just trying to keep quickly read the chat, which you can see a good, obviously you can see above my head, and I had to try and catch, catch myself up. So yeah, yeah, the team legit FG36, absolutely flawless maiden, went fantastically well, and flew also fantastically well as well. I will get the episode for the FG36 maiden out uh, sometime later this week. Fingers crossed that'll happen. Uh, topic number six is, I've put a link to this in the video description for you. Those of you which missed out on the mini talent, it's now back on Banggood for 36 quid. Absolutely fantastic model. It's a lot of foam for your money. I know many of you probably are now already own a mini talent, but those of you which missed out previously, oh, by the way, this is only in the EU warehouse. Uh, so if you are in Europe, uh, then yeah, 36 quid absolute bargain which sorry to rub it in for those of you in the united states 45 dollars 99 unbelievable amount of, amount of foam for the money uh, and those of you which have owned a mini talon uh, please do share your thoughts on that model uh, because somebody might be hesitant going that model's a bit too cheap is it really worth it i can tell you point blank it's definitely worth it and i've got a spare one up there um they fly absolutely fantastically well. Brilliant from medium to long range FPV. Uh, and you also, if you overpower them moderately, they are brilliant line of sight models. Although I have to admit, I've never really flown by line of sight. You know, I've always just used it for FPV. And if you want to know more about the Mini Talon, uh, just nip across to my YouTube channel, type in Mini Talon 20, or go onto YouTube, type in Mini Talon 2017, and I've got a full blown overview to mine. Uh, because when I was building mine, I uh, went and literally watched every YouTube video out there on a Mini Talon and I incorporated everything which I learned from other RC pilots and then incorporated that into my model. Um, we set with the one mistake is that I put silver um, covering film on the wings, which is definitely not a suggestion because you just can't see the model in the sky. Live and learn, you know. <laughs> but the Mini Talon, absolutely fantastic model. Now, the last but one topic. Uh... Oh, fantastic. So I just saw that someone um, said five miles per hour wind. Happy days, Lee. Happy day. Uh, Les, sorry. Right, anyway, coming back onto topic. Uh, last topic for you this morning is something which I desperately need to put in more of my models. Uh, and they are these. These are lost model alarm so you'll notice they've got a little buzzer down here at the bottom and then you've got two leads up 
there as well. Now, I bought a pack, pack of five of these for a whole $7.49, okay? So $7, we're gonna say they are a pound each, okay? Now, why am I bringing these up as a topic? The, the, the reason is actually very simple. As many of you know that we fly in fields. You can see that that's a field there. It's not a traditional flying site with Moni Tony, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, instead, uh, it's a flying site where it, it, we could stuff it in a tree at any point in time. And then throughout the year, we're gonna have a mixture of crops and things like that come up in the fields. And recently uh, on Craig's model, he literally landed it in the middle of the field, which is not the bigger than the world because it's only grass for silage. But he was out there for a good 10 minutes trying to hunt around uh, and trying to find the model. And Dave went over to give him a hand. And as you can imagine, I did my part, which was to buzz them both with a wing uh, as they were flying around the field. But on a serious point, this little device here for a pound would have helped Craig find his model uh, almost straight away because uh, the thing about these, they have two wires and you put them in line with a servo, okay? So uh, you have um, your got your servo over here and you plug your servo wire in there and then plug that wire into your receiver, okay? And it will then, um, it will only start beeping when there are no RC inputs. So imagine that you've lost or stuffed your model in the field somewhere in a field of crops, and then you don't move your sticks on your transmitter, that little thing will start beeping SOS. And for the size of it, which is not very big at all, it's actually ridiculously loud. Uh, and I know that I've used it many, many times before. Uh, those of you which saw the Hornets, um, fact, let me go see if we can find the video quickly. Uh, and you're here, because I wired mine up wrong. And again, this is why I want to share this with you, because I made a mistake uh, on it. Let me see if I can find, load more, view 500 more. Have I posted that many videos on YouTube? May have done. Uh, there it is, Tree of Doom. That, uh, that episode there, you'll see my Hornet FPV flying wing flying across and you'll hear it beeping SOS. And the reason being is because I thought I was being a smart ass by chopping off the lot, one of the wires and then only connecting one wire up to the receiver. The issue with that is that I put that on a channel which wasn't being used. So it was never getting an RC signal. So now it beeps SOS continuously. Uh, and to be frankly honest, that does bemuse me and I've never changed it since. Uh, but on a serious point, if you put them in line with a servo for the sake of a quid, it could save you $130. Again, this one needs one put in, in there. It could save you uh, whatever the cost of your model is plus, plus your parts. So a topic which I've been meaning to bring them up for a while, lost model alarms super cheap you can get them on banggood you can get them on ebay um if you have a local model shop somewhere near you they probably cost about tenner each uh but no on a serious point um uh, even if they did cost a tenner compare that well they cost a pound i'm trying to make the point here for a pound for being able to find a model really straightforward uh henry says servo or esc i don't think it frankly matters it really doesn't matter. Personally, I put, again, Elijah says you could put it on an auxiliary channel and then you can put it on a switch. But yeah, if you put it on an auxiliary channel, you'll have to press the switch to stop it beeping because it needs to not. It's when it detects a lack of RC signal is when it will start its own countdown and then start beeping after no input's been received. That's why the one in my Hornet wing just beeps because I've put it on a spare channel and I've got no RC output going on then that one, just power, and then it just beeps SOS as it's flying around, which I find immensely amusing, but that might be undesirable for you. Uh, so yeah, I, I would put it on a servo to be honest. Um, yeah, Joe, I agree with you, pretty wing, expensive to do, yeah, but it, the FG36 was the one which helped, well, it's the, that's the wing when I found Team Legit originally, and, it is everything which I expected it to be. And anyway, you'll see it flying uh, very, very shortly. Uh, so a quick look. Uh, 
and again apologies for pausing a moment i am just sat here looking at the the top uh, sorry at the chat so yeah lost model alarms super cheap cost a quid a couple of dollars absolute bargain compare that to the cost of your model you'd be crazy not to do it so that's why i've got five here because i want to put those on five more of my models and i've got a couple of more in the box so i'll probably have a morning or an afternoon of just going around and fitting lost model alarms on the on the models uh, because it's really frustrating because you like some of the stuff we've stuffed it in hedges and just <laughs> have no idea where it is and if it means that you can get straight there then you can tackle trying to ike the model out of whatever you've been and stuffed it in so anyway that was it uh the last topic is i've been bought a diversity receiver now i didn't go for the laforge or anything like that the true uh whatever it was I just bought the cheap one, to be really honest. There's a link to that in the video description. The Relic, whatever it was, Summit Pro. Need to get the 3D printer running here late this morning so I can print out a little cover for it. Should be with me in a couple of days. We will find out if it's any good or not. Well, hopefully, I'll be able to let you know by next RC Coffee Chat, which will be next Wednesday, whether it's any good or not. Um, so it's on the way to me. Fingers crossed, it works great. Can't see a reason why it wouldn't do, to be honest. And the last topic for today is that we need to go and check the hobby king website to see if it's still broken or not now obviously we've just been and seen and again i just want to make the point on this one let me just turn the chat off there uh, their website is still currently broken uh, because it's still showing 77 pence for those little motors uh, let's turn the chat back on anyway we need to go and see if the hobby king website is still broken or not so i've just typed in sidewinder into their search box and today could be the day of the sidewinder who knows let's press enter and let's find out no oh. it's gonna be another week i'm afraid and we're right on the end of may this model was supposed to be coming out of may and it's now may the 31st and no sign of the sidewinder and did i type it correctly bloody hell i did um that surprised me uh, our apologies ladies and gentlemen the hobby king website is now completely broken there are no results returned for the search term of sidewinder what can you do what can you do right with that said it's time for us to wrap up that's me pausing again just keep an eye on the chat Right, what did we cover today in today's RC Coffee Chat? Three duffers in the row. Frankly, absolutely frustrating. And the, the one common thing amongst those three models is that they're all the same manufacturer and they all have crap packaging. Very, very annoying. Fed that info back uh, into Banggood. So hopefully in the future, others won't feel the pain which I've been through in the last couple of days. Very, very annoying to say the least. And again, it seems to be tied down to those models. We've had other models turn up here and they've been knocked around and things like that. It's going to happen, you know. It's got a bloody long way to go from China to me here in the United Kingdom. Packaging does need to be a priority. Other models like the Mini Talon, for example, triple skinned cardboard box. That box ain't getting crushed unless you've actually booted it around. And even if you boot that box around, it probably still withstand it. So it does depend upon the manufacturer. Um, in this case, those three models, I, I believe, are all from the same manufacturer. They all have the same crappy packaging, which is a bit of a downside. Again, sometimes it's a bit of a lottery. And again, I'm sure Banggood support was sort of like refunds and things like that. But it's still frustrating. We had to wait for the model to turn up and it turned up broken. So fed the info back. Like I said, spoken to the right person at Banggood. Hopefully something will get sorted in the near future. But by the way, do not let, let that put you off the Fun Fighter series and especially the Rare Bear. The Rare Bear is an absolutely skits model. If you ever get the opportunity to fly one or at least, or if you can own one, absolutely brilliant models. 80 mile an hour out of the box on 3S skits. Topic number two, which we covered today, was the iNav series. If you want to see uh, and watch the newer episodes before they're released on YouTube, they are posted in the Facebook group. The link to the Facebook group is in the video description. It's called Rag the Nuts Off. The link to that is below. It's free to join in the top right-hand corner. 
click on the join button and one of us will pick up your request later this morning. The KFU XFL. I feel compelled to bring this one back up onto the screen because look at the blooming size of that. In fact, if I can get the baby KFU in there, it's literally twice the size of it. Absolutely brilliant. I'm really looking forward to flying that one. So, yeah, this one should be out for a maiden later this week. Definitely on Friday. There's only a little bit of stuff to, to go in now. I'm really looking forward to this one. I want to see how well that that long cord of an arming wing, which is just a simple fold and actually proven to be stronger than a flight test wing. And again, look up Ed from Experimental Airlines. Look him up on New Balls. Uh, and he does a test on it, compares the uh, flight test wing to an arming wing, and the arming wing works out stronger. So, and again, that's the route which I'm going, because you've all seen my flying, and it's, sometimes it's not the best in the world. Uh, we also uh, looked at Hobby King screw up, and they're back pedaling on those little motors. I didn't feel that was personally playing fair, to be honest. So, to be honest, if you've bought those motors and they try and charge you, what are they gonna do? Stop you buying from Hobby King again, don't think that's going to go down publicly very well, do you? Uh, so the, the next topic which we had was the flawless maiden of the Team Legit 36, FG36. Everything which I knew it was going to be. Mightily impressed with that one. We'll, we'll have an episode out on the FG36 uh, in the near future. Uh, the other topic which we had, the Mini Talon is available for 36 quid. That is a bloody lot of fame for your money. Uh, and it's unfortunately that's only available in the EU warehouse. It's unfortunately more expensive uh, from other warehouses. And the real main topic, which I, uh, the one thing which I really wanted to, to make a big feature of today, which is lost model alarms. They cost a quid and they can save you your model. Because if you lose your model in a tree or on a bunch of trees or in a field or something like that, just leave the sticks alone and the model will then call, call SOS. I just think they're absolutely fantastic value for money. I will do a separate little episode on them. Uh, and if you want to hear what they sound like, uh, if you go on to, again, on my YouTube channel, look up uh, Tree of Doom and Hornet FPV Flying Wings, and you'll hear my wing beeping SOS as it flies by. That's not how you wire them up, I hasten to add. <laughs> but uh, like I said, it bemused me, so I left it how it was. So hey ho, they cost a quid and can save you a model. I think that's fan that's a fantastic investment. Uh, and then, um, like I mentioned, I got a little diversity receiver on the way to me for the fat shot goggles. Hopefully that works out well. We'll find out next week if that's any good or not. Uh, and unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I am have to announce again that the Hobby King website is broken. There are no Sidewinder wings and today is the 31st of May and the Sidewinder was apparently coming out in May of this year. So it's going to be a little bit late. What it flies like? No idea. We haven't got our hands on one yet. Really looking forward to that to be honest. We'll see when it comes out. So on that note, it's time for me to wrap up. If this is your first time here for an RC coffee chat, welcome aboard. I'm Matt. I hope you've been enjoyed the experience. If you're not already subscribed underneath this video, there's a red subscribe button next to my name, Matthew Walkborn. Click that button and you'll uh, get subscribed. If you'd like to be notified of any future episodes, maybe the next episode for the iNav series, for example, or the next RC Coffee Chat, if you press the little bell icon next to the subscribe button and let YouTube notify you of the next episode. If you have enjoyed this episode do me a favor and press the thumbs up button underneath this episode and if you have any feedback good or bad or have any questions about anything which we've been uncovered here in today's rc coffee chat you can either discuss it over on the facebook group there's a link to that in the video description or you can leave me a comment underneath this video i do my best to get back to every single comment which is posted on this channel which is Sometimes quite a challenge because you guys talk a lot. As you can see what's going on above my head and apologies, I've not really been looking at the chat. So on that note, from myself, Matt, thank you very much for joining me today for an RC. 
coffee chat and we'll see you same time next Wednesday. I'll see you there. And on that note, from myself, Matt, cheerios. Oh, and happy flying if you're out flying today. Might be stinking out for another flight in a moment because it's only a few miles an hour wind here. So, uh, and yeah, I'm going to go and grab the S back, find a prop uh, saver on it and chuck it out again. I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios. Bye-byes.